Why don't we call the meeting to order at uh, about 6 um, Thank you all for coming. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Nice yeah. Christmas and New Year. I know I did. I believe it's all over already. <laughs> nice to have the holidays come. Nice to have them go and get back to a regular schedule. So, um, think, does everyone have a copy of last month's minutes? I don't. You don't? Here you go. Yeah. Hold back. Okay. Take a minute or two of the I'm into now. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yeah. Me? This, yeah, it gives us the article in the area. Sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 How feasible is it that we could possibly get a copy of minutes you know, a couple of days before the meeting? So completely feasible. It was my uh, fault. They were no. done. I just okay. did not okay. remember to say. That way we save time you know, here and people can come. Can I still blame the holidays? Oh yeah, sure. You will. I'll buy it. Great job as usual. Yeah, I, she did. I have to fill in for her tonight. I hope I can follow her footsteps. <laughs> well. All right, hearing none, I would accept a motion to accept the minutes as written. I make the motion. And then a second. I second it. All, right, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Um, I just want to mention um, I guess I am an official member of the, of the council now. I, Took the time finally to get up to the clerk's office and get my official letter. So okay. I'm official. Um, yeah. well, I was given a sure. packet of stuff oh, yeah. that Debbie also dropped in my office to read over, and I, I had not through some of it. Some of this I'm familiar with because I'm also on the board of registration for optometry in Boston okay. and have been for okay. four years, going on five, I guess. I'm pretty familiar with most of it. But. And the open meeting law would affect them? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Yeah. 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 We could. Um, I trust everyone else is official and has uh, uh, raised their hand in the clerk's office. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay, great. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to have any. Absolutely. Any, any, uh, any, any Beth says well, you have to go to the clerk's office to be. Oh, yes. Yes, to be sworn in. I know, I never have. Oh. Well, I have to leave then right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess it's something you might want to do. Okay, I, I, I be, wasn't aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Kathy Cummings. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, the town clerk. Yeah, right. well, I know where it is. You may have to go to the selectman's office to get the letter of recommendation from the selectman. 
I don't think I ever got one. I'll they, they can do it for you. Okay. Right there. Why don't you give us a call? Yeah. Well, guess what? I'm on an airplane. I'll do it in a couple of weeks. Okay. I'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you. I'll take care of it in a couple of weeks. All right. Great. Write myself a note. But Marty's right. Lorraine will help you with the paperwork, and then I'll just run across the hall. It takes two seconds. Carry the car and move. Give you right. the official. Right. Thank Linda for putting together some of the, the handouts here. I mean, Even if you get a minute when, you, when you're away, just give her, you could give her a call. She'll get it all set up yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. We had talked a couple of days ago, and I thought mm -hmm. there was mm -hmm. a couple of these items that you know, we, we, we could at least you know, briefly re review tonight and then mm -hmm. have them in our possession so mm -hmm. we can look them over and discuss them even more thoroughly at our next meeting. Uh, thank you, Linda. Welcome. So go ahead. If I have, I have oh. a question. How many of the police ones did not? It's a wonderful thing every year. We had given them somewhere around 60, I believe, names that we had yeah. uh, received, registered for them. And we did provide transportation, yes. Oh, good. They may have had more at the luncheon than we knew about. Okay, I have a report for you. To start. It seems like a short month, that's all I will say. Um, it will have Some nice holidays in there, which were appreciated but um, but saying that too I was almost surprised when I ran my reports for activities um, and attendance or participation at the center via my senior center the computer system that they used to scan into and, and people are really being very good about trying to use their cards or telling us when they can't use their cards so that we can keep it up and maintain it properly so you'll notice the monthly total for the number of people that came in the door uh, for December was 462 and the last month's number that I keep there in parentheses was 479 so it being a holiday month mm -hmm. I thought actually that was yeah, pretty, pretty good, good. And mm -hmm. we didn't I didn't even think we'd had scheduled quite as much e either but having the regular activities the exercise of course still people people are regular with that they try to make all of the opportunities that we offer for exercise and fitness so, which you'll note, that number is actually 235 duplicated, which means the number of times anyone came in the door, or, or any door, um, to any of our activities for exercise was 235 versus 207 in November. Certainly keep in mind that this is the computer and it's only as good as what goes in. Mm -hmm. So I have in the past always felt we were a little shy and I might have added the probable 10% that may not have checked in, but these days I'm less inclined to do that because I do think we're getting the numbers in it. They don't do it, we try to do it, we get the manual names and we'll put them in. So I feel we're getting really close to accurate information off the system. The unduplicated, as I've mentioned before, is the same people coming in, so they're only counted once at that point. Other areas, you know, instruction like art, uh, recreation, leisure, like knitting, pickleball, bridge, which it has fallen off a bit for the winter. People coming in to use the computers that we have here for public use, and then just a social drop-in visit. So those are the numbers I have presented there. Shine, which again he has, and this is Norm Tetro, um, coming three times a month, fairly regularly, seeing probably four people each time. So the number anywhere between 14 and 15, which you see there, per month which should all be different every now and then. He has someone who has to return for a second visit, but oftentimes he's taking care of it the one time that they've come. For community education, we finished up the class in December with Bob Jackman that he was running in the fall, which was situate biographies or some biographies. He will repeat that again starting in March. He has one now going on, which is 19th century situate history, and we, I think, took 25 names this time for it. The men's breakfast in December, standing number at 18. We had Bob Jackman, the same man who runs the, the history classes. He did shipbuilding in Situate or the area. Um, they really enjoy any subject that he talks about. The other two cafe talks we had in December, um, kudos to Cynthia Gallo, um, who owns and runs the Roman table. She was really wonderful. A yes. Nice talk on olive oil samples. Really good information. Cool. And yes. everyone who went down there, and they did, she gave 10% off of their Christmas purchases. So it was including me. 
I will say. <laughs> so it was really nice and it was great information. It really, when you know more about what goes on behind the scenes and, and how they got there, it was great. And then also the Irish Mossing. Um, and you can see the fun, I just think it's funny the number difference. There were 24 people here for Irish Mossing. It's the history yeah. that they really do come up for. And probably many of the same people that came for that all came for the Olive Oil, but just not as many. Who was Sandra Franklin? Uh, she, Local person, she she is now. She she's not a um, a native situate person. She's mm -hmm. arrived more recently, but got involved in the historical society and really she has a PhD. So was a professor. I'm not sure what her area had been, but mm -hmm. she really studied um, the Irish Mossing. Mm -hmm. So she, she involved the museum. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. So very. I think that's where she when she first came and started volunteering. She just became very interested. Mm -hmm. So she she gave a good thorough presentation on that. Uh, the Garden Club came and did boxwood trees, which was great. And we did have a Christmas celebration luncheon with entertainment that we did pay for. So I, there was a small stipend for people. We did buy the food. We did pay for the entertainment. So it offsets it a little bit. But as you see, when we talk about the budget, we do have some money in programs that, though not always, we just don't want to keep expending it. We can. So we did that for Christmas. And it was great. 40 people. May I ask? The, mm -hmm. the computer. Is there anybody available to help? You know, we were at one point to get some training. We will. It came up last meeting. I know that, and I can't tell you how many times I've written down the name of the oh, no. person I, I need to call if, for having a regular, yeah. maybe drop in if you have questions. We would love that. And this woman, I happen to know, we would pay her, or you would pay her, and she would also do iPad training and/or computer training, so I can get right. her in here. We don't have the lab. If people are bringing their own iPads, that works. But um, and we need wireless in the building to be able to do that as well, which we don't have yet. So there's some logistics to work out. But yes, we will do that for you. So under notes, just a few of the things that had come up. I mentioned at the November meeting uh, that I applied through the MCOA for the Aging Mastery Program grant that they were offering through Tufts. And yes, we did get it. So um, although they offered, we could have done it twice, but it's 12 weeks. And to have started it in March, I really didn't feel uh, logistically not knowing about the Harbor Community Building and, and what we would have for space. I just felt more comfortable doing it just in the fall. So that's the plan, 12 weeks in the fall, beginning in September. We will have, if anyone had read the, the Patriot Ledger, I believe it was in, and it might have also been in the Boston Globe. So it's become, it's national. Uh, I will say I was involved in the pilot. I was involved in the development and the pilot when I worked in Duxbury, so I am familiar enough. But now, of course, it's gone through some iterations and changes as it's um, been rolled out. So it's a little bit different than when we started, but it'll well, be great. Linda, just because I'm taking the notes, uh, it's not through Tufts. They are providing the... But the, they are providing the grant? The grant money. So okay, when, so what do, what do those abbreviations stand for? Aging Master. Aging Master. Okay. MCOA is the Massachusetts Council on Aging Organization. Okay. In fact, the, the Aging Mastery Program was developed through the National Council on Aging, NCOA. And then but the, the, the grant state. money is through Tufts Medical? Uh, or Tufts yes, Tufts Health, Tufts, Tufts Health Plan. Oh, the health plan. Okay. Yes. And and is that something that you'll be attending or others? We will be organizing it and running it. It will be for um, adults 55 and older. Okay. Wide open? They Wide open. Okay. Oh, so they don't have to be situate residents. Is, um, is that what you I'm mean? I'm just trying to figure out who's gonna, who goes to an aging master. We'll recruit. I mean, who it's anyone who to? wants to go through this program of uh, 8 to 10, 12 modules. Now I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting how, how many they have designed it to be now. Different sessions, different topics um, that have been designated as important for reinforcing behaviors that might lend themselves to, to impactful changes in their lifestyles that help uh, meet the challenges of aging. Can they come to this one and eliminate that one, or do they have no. to commit to This all? is a program of 12 weeks. They it's have it's to a, that. Ideally, you're committed. Um, we would take so many. I think ideally they want at least 25. 30 is a good number. When we did it in Duxbury as a pilot, I think we started with 38 and ended up with 32. So some yeah. decided to go. It's a point-based system. So as you <coughs> succeed at um, 
completing certain activities, you get certain numbers of points, and in the end, honestly, the points translate into gifts, <laughs> prizes. It, it was incentive, motivation. But it worked, um, and it wasn't the most important part of it. Really, they were all appreciating the, the professionals who came in and spoke on the various topics. That was really the highlight of the whole program. Right. So it is finding those resources and then bringing them in to meet with the people. So, um, this I mean, is ideally, really though, well. is it for situate residents only? Um, I situate guess we would have to determine that. I usually would say, no, that's not necessary. In fact, Marshfield is doing it as well, and there could be people who, who would go there first because maybe they're starting it in March. Okay. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't necessarily exclude anyone, especially because we want those numbers. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. So that's one. Uh, I, I did think it might be nice for you to know, and I should mention that I have been since September involved in this um, Mass Municipal Association certificate program. So there are Fridays that I have not been here and will continue to not be here. The program consists of 25 Fridays where I go to a full day of class, which is supported by the town as well. They contributed to my going um, and recommended. Where is it? it actually takes place at the Duxbury Police Station. So I can't say I'm mine. I'm the only one there from <coughs> Duxbury. There are a lot of commuters, <laughs> but not so much me. Um, it happens to start again tomorrow. So it's five courses that I've been taking, leadership, human resource management, um, strategies of local government comes next, financing and budgeting and this one other, uh, the legalities of town government. So it's really been wonderful and I, wow. I, yeah. I'm enjoying it, but it is a lot of work and it does take me out of the office on some Fridays. Yeah. Starting tomorrow there are some I won't be here for. I still lead the Tai Chi for Healthy Aging, so that's weekly, and I don't see that going anywhere. And so far I haven't been able to get anyone else interested in training, nor do I right now have some a time I could send someone to, but as it comes up I could. And I would love to have a partner or someone else to help supplement, but at this point it is me, and, it, and it's so well received, I would not stop it. Oh, um, that's great. A, we have a great group, and they really do appreciate it. So at this point, weekly, I have no fewer than 10 or 11, and, and Lucille has been going, and my first group was more like a 7 to 8 uh, participation rate, so it's grown a bit, and they, they don't like to miss. Nothing like good publicity. Nothing like it. So in the absence of having a volunteer and activity coordinator, um, I have been, of course, more responsible for scheduling monthly speakers and <coughs> programs. Uh, also the volunteer scheduling between myself and Jill, trying to, so obviously recruit, recruitment and placement has slowed down. We do have volunteers and they are in place and Good. helping us out as, as, Good. as they can and as much as we can. How many volunteers? Lately, on, on the front desk, which is primarily how we've been using them lately, we yeah. try to have two here every day. We could double up, we've talked about, and have two at the same time, just so that they would have company and maybe do some administrative work at the same time, yeah. as well as answering the phones. We have many more volunteers, of course, in other capacities. Um, <coughs> I did write an article for the Mariner, sort of a year in review, and that was in last week's issue, so if you didn't see it, I included a copy here. <laughs> Well done. Just because it does mention some things of importance, just to know that we were there and we should be in the paper every month now. Um, I should at least be writing. If not, I do have uh, Laura scheduled to write something about outreach and Jenny and Q on transportation, which you have heard. So all of that is good information. So a little help and we will be in the media a little more often. The needs assessment report, and I apologize uh, maybe for jumping the gun. So of course the results are in and we're in in December and the report was submitted um, but the review is still pending and meeting with uh, the research team just to vet out some of the report and make sure we understand it and it includes all the things that we were looking for so um, and then the first stop for a presentation by the UMass research team would be the Board of Selectmen so that's not scheduled as yet and, and when it is you will know you could be invited to come in then or then subsequent to that, we would do something else with it. So um, that's why we have to responses were still about 30%? 32% actually, we, we were over. Okay. Um, numbers were, were good, were great. Mm -hmm. So after the report is um, presented to the selectmen, uh, will that be at a selectmen's meeting yep. or mm -hmm. behind closed doors? No, it would be a selectmen's oh, meeting. Open, open. Okay. Okay. So 
Um, then that would actually be the presentation, right, of the, the numbers? Yes. Oh, uh, and we just review them at the next meeting? We could. I mean, not to say that you wouldn't come and do yeah, we, that we, again we could for still us. Have the presenter come here. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't think a lot of people always watch the rerun at the Selectman's meeting. Mm -hmm. or watch it live. You know? Well, there'll be some, some do. You go to the meeting. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what we, we, we could go to the meeting. Um, mm -hmm. Those that can't. And then we would have some sort of a public presentation. I mean, we do want the public to hear, and we wouldn't rely on the Selectman's meeting to do that yeah. part of it. Oh, I'd be lost without Channel 9. <laughs> In between law and order, what would I watch? <laughs> one keeps you awake and one puts you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, too shame, my friend. <laughs> So uh, our job opening has been posted uh, since mid-December, I would say. Well, what, what's the position? The position is for a combined activities and volunteer coordinator, which we have had from March through October in 2014, Melanie's position. Um, and so it is the same position funded through the formula grant, not through the town budget, for 25 hours a week. And where's it been posted? I have some On the website, uh, the town website. So now it is posted? Now it is. Okay, great. And it has been there. And that's situate ma.gov. Um, so I did also, um, and it's on the agenda that I made copies of the 2016 proposed budget for the COA, and as well, I included a current copy of a monthly budget to show the line items and also to show some of the uh, revolving accounts that we have money in, so you could see that. Um, and also, Off the top of your head, do we get a lot of donations? Uh, we get a fair number of donations, absolutely. Um, there was some. Absolutely, yes, we get consistently some donations. Um, I can't give a firm number, really, and what has changed. It does seem like it may be less than it was in the past, but I can't really say that. So is there a line item here for the donations? Yeah, there is. There is. Um, I will look at that and try to explain it, but it's okay. a big number. You know, it's, yeah. not, it's not broken down to know right. what I've received for a month's time or even a year's time. <coughs> Uh, and lastly, I guess community partnerships. Um, Laura, Jenny, and, and I will be meeting with the clergy group in February. They talked to us in January about it. Um, Laura and Jenny worked with the community Christmas as well as some of the clergy to help families who were found to be in need over the <coughs> holiday period. And that sparked some other ideas and also some a, a need to, to sort of talk and determine how best to go about helping as a as a group, mm -hmm. as a community when it comes up. So we will meet with them in February on that. I think it seems like um, the clergy throughout all the mm -hmm. church community yeah. seem to be more um, not just willing, but you know, there's a, a, a need out mm -hmm. there for them to be helpful with some more community mm -hmm. outreach kind of thing. And Absolutely. You know, obviously because of you know some of the drug issues that we've had. And, yeah, I'm very helpful with the drug. I know right? there was a very, you know, uh, um, last night at the <coughs> theater, I know that there was a uh -huh. movie that was presented. Oh, was that? I didn't know, know that was. Apparently Second the time. place was packed, I guess, and mm -hmm. I know there were lots of clergy that were mm -hmm. going to be attending there, so it's nice to see that the clergy are kind of, mm -hmm. you know, unifying to kind of help with, with mm -hmm. efforts along those lines. And yeah. I'm sure, you know, there are some things that they could help us with in terms of, of senior issues as well, so. Well, it's, it's funny because one of the seniors, Thursday afternoon is my uh, afternoon to volunteer at the front desk, but one of the seniors did go to that presentation, the movie, and the discussion afterwards, and um, she's just someone who likes to keep busy, but she thought it was terrific. Mm. She, she thought it was fabulous, yeah. especially the discussion afterwards. So that was just one personal opinion. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. They are. They've been, Thank you, Ruth Kelly. <laughs> terrific about soliciting, you know, need through us and offering mm -hmm. their assistance mm -hmm. if, if they could be. We'd like to work with them. I will, on a note, that wasn't in my report because it just happened last week, but I did show the movie Beyond Belief. Oh, that was really? Um, did you get a good crowd? Well, I did not get a good crowd, but I did get a very enthusiastic 
four people, I will say. But because they were so pleased with it, honestly, and, and knew about the showing that the Rotary had done at the Millwharf Cinema, um, I will show it again. I will publicize it differently. It was in the newsletter, but of course Positive, it's January. Strong. I think I will do it again because it yeah. was so well worth it, and of course I think people would um, very much like another opportunity or maybe a couple. So we will do it. We did it Good. here. It worked. Good. I can manage that. Great. What day was that, Linda? It was last Friday. The, the most difficult part actually is finding a day and time to do it. Not to lament that too, too much, but because we have activities here, finding a time that it's open for the two and a half hours I needed to be open, and it's also a time that's not in conflict with another activity elsewhere. Um, did you have it here? I did. I did. So that's been the tricky part. My Tai Chi class won't give up their Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> and I have to be here to run the movie. Yeah. So anyway, but thank you, because Rotary did um, lend this movie to us, and it's beautiful. So it was really, really nice. <coughs> Loved it. So that is my report. Also, you have copies of um, the Manager of Social Services report and outreach and transportation. Um, the Community Connectedness Campaign, I will mention in case anyone had missed that, but it certainly had been mentioned in the Mariner, in the Ledger, in the Globe. Laura was quoted in the Globe. I might have been somewhere, and I had very little to do with it, relatively speaking, but through the Marshfield Situate Suicide Prevention Coalition and then a, a committee that Laura was um, acting on as well, they decided they wanted to promote a sense of community connectedness and they came up with an idea Great. for, I have, a, uh, I have a sample in my office, but they decided to go with these Altoids and they had a saying about you are stronger than you think. Altoids are really strong breath pens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, we took one day, the Council on Aging and, and our staff went up the driftway and went to some of the medical buildings and a few of the other places around and just handed them out to people, whether in the parking lot or waiting at the doctor's offices. Um, maybe targeting seniors in our case, but not necessarily. And then there were other times they were targeting downtown shoppers or they went to the supermarket and different organizations kind of gave their time and helped give these out just to give somebody a reason to smile that day. Right. So it was a really nice campaign and Laura was certainly integral in helping to pull this off um, and we were happy to be involved with that too. That was great. We had a couple of kids that came into my office with the Altoids. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think they might have been from Italy. I oh. think. Oh. Uh, the little boy was kind of shy and said, can I give you something? I said, no, no, no. He said, we're just handing these out That's to the for you. people. <laughs> Have yeah. something to All the selectmen yeah. got them in their mailboxes yeah. at the town hall. So oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, was it, did, did the, I, I ran into some Girl Scouts out in the driveway, and they mm -hmm. gave me one, but it, on the tag it said, this is a random act of kindness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was that preempting yeah, this? Yeah, mine had some sort of tag, yeah. something the, like that. Yeah, yeah. random acts of kindness, was that was the campaign. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was great, and I'm sure they'll do it again. Um, Rep. Cantwell's office was behind it as well, um, and helped to develop sort of a mm -hmm. protocol for it. So it was great. Um, and that's mentioned in Laura's report, if you didn't, if you wanted to read that. Also, um, our outreach certainly was able to assist the community Christmas with names for their baskets. Um, so I think that was helpful for most people that did receive them and they were very grateful for that. Um, and otherwise just sort of standard numbers for both transportation. Excuse me, just really, who's kind of taken over community Christmas and Susan Pippen is no longer? I, I think it was by committee, kind of, and it was uh -huh. it was uh, in flux a uh -huh. bit. It was just yeah. sort of a year that they did what they could yeah. um, with a few people, and not just one yeah. person heading it. Yeah, it didn't seem to get as much publicity this year as it has in years past, right. Right. which is understandable. Mm -hmm. You know, Susan's passing. Yeah, Betty Crowley used to be very involved with that. I'm not sure. I'm sure uh -huh. she still is. Uh -huh. Well, they do have a lot of people that have been with it for years. Mm -hmm. um, right. Right. You know, so right. perhaps um, right. before someone can step into Susan's position per se, yeah. but there are a lot of veterans uh, of the, you know, right. volunteers. Well, I'm sure it's very well organized mm -hmm. oh, yeah. in terms of what needs to be done, when needs to be done, and how it's to be done. So mm -hmm. Susan is a very organized person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was amazing. Oh, no, that's okay. So those, those are the reports. Okay. <coughs> Anyone have any questions on Linda's reports? 
Oh, but I, and the outreach, um, what, I'm sorry, and the outreach, um, is, is it Laura that met with um, Sandra Lindsay? Yes. That might have been when we both did. And yeah, we put under outreach, it says this month we formalized our MOU. The memo of understanding. Actually, that was a couple of months ago, I guess. But um, just something that they had wanted to initiate with us, Social Elder Services, because it was the first time they had worked with someone in Lara's capacity as a social worker, as a social services manager, doing the kinds of things she's doing, seeing the people she's seeing, mm -hmm. and initiating some of the services through them. So they wanted a memo of understanding so that the roles were fairly clear and she knew what they were willing okay, to be responsible for or could do. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah. Um, and then vice versa. So it's, it's positive, it's good. Uh, but it did take us a while to iron that out because I just want to make sure you get it right. Homebound seniors, a lot, a lot of visits. Enough, yes. Uh, between Jenny, she will do it from Ms. here. No, I'm just saying. Laura. If somebody, how do you find out? Oftentimes, it's maybe through a neighbor or someone else who is going in to help assist them, and they may need more. Um, sometimes it's through calls that go in either to the police or the fire. Um, I mean, would there be um, so the board of health? Occasionally. Would there be a need for a friendly visitor? Yes. And you know, and she is, she is talking about that. We are talking about that not only through our own outreach, but with the clergy. So yeah. that is something yeah. that we're considering yes. doing yes. along yeah. with them. Yeah, it's a clear idea. Mm -hmm. So that would be, I think, well received and necessary. So, good question. Well, like we, we had a friendly visitor program. I think here so. Because I was a friendly visitor. So <laughs> I, I, you know, I know. Okay. And unfortunately, um, my friend, she became my friend, passed away. But um, I don't think that there were a lot of seniors who were, there were a few mm -hmm. seniors who were friendly visitors, but I think it would be great to get that program uh, really emphasized again, because I started out visiting my um, senior when she was 90. Mm -hmm. She passed away at 93, mm -hmm. and she really became my friend, and she she had family members, but mm -hmm. she really looked forward to having someone outside of the family sure. mm -hmm. to just, it's to just outside story. of, right, <coughs> that she story. could see as a, I think it'd be great to, to emphasize that program again. Yeah. I think it would be. Is this the program with Social Realm Services or just No, it would be through us. Just, just, just just yeah, yeah, the Social Realm well, Services has the Friendly Visitor Program. Do. Um, does that extend into situate though? This was oh, yes, it does. It does, and, but nobody from situate has requested a need for it mm -hmm. as far as, because my husband was trained for that maybe six months ago, okay. finally got a gentleman from Cohasset, okay. but uh, there were no people from situate that well, had Well, we'll make sure we have need. them on our list. <laughs> Actually, that's well, probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Well, in this particular case, there was outreach done mm -hmm. because the, the woman they thought might be happy to have a friendly visitor. And when, <coughs> when she was called, she was all in favor of it. She thought, well, this will be great. But then, then a few days later, she called and she said, well, I don't know about having a stranger come into my home. <laughs> so yeah. the staff said to her, when you meet Dale, you will know you, it's, <laughs> she's, she's not, not going to be a stranger. stranger. <laughs> so I think there could be a little bit of apprehension about about that, yeah. having a stranger come in. Yeah. But I. I think that there could be a need, but I don't have any facts to back, back it up, though. I mean, I just think it would be great well, to... with the backing of the council or the backing of the clergy association, mm -hmm. we'll have decent references. Yeah. Right. I think Laura has found that it would be a well-received um, opportunity. Uh, she has been doing the dog companion program, and, and granted, relatively few who are taking advantage of it, but those that are, are really enjoying it. So weekly they are, are having someone come in with their therapy dog mm -hmm. for a visit, and that's been great. Mm -hmm. so, well, you know, every, every new program takes a little while mm -hmm. to get it, get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. It would be great to have it in town. Yep. Mm -hmm. Linda, is there, is there a month-to-month -month comparison on outreach from November to December? I don't know if they've done that. I mean, they, they didn't do that here, as you can see. We've had some trouble with the reporting, and I think there was a time maybe we could get that more easily, and maybe that's why they haven't included it now, because the reports, Just there's been a bug mm -hmm. with an update, and they haven't been able to figure it out. Although so this month might be a, an interesting month. 
coming up. Absolutely. I mean, just mm -hmm. problems. Post holiday. Mm -hmm. um, true. Mm -hmm. Stuff. And um, yeah, because we used to have that report. I will mention it before you guys go try that out. I care for professional time, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at Mass Health for too long. You people said this to me. You people did this to me. Does everyone have the budget um, piece in front of them? I'd have Linda if she could bring it through so we could kind of okay, go over Okay, so I bit. think there's two pieces there. I'm not sure that I have all my hands. Did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll hold it twice, yeah. Gordon, you want to bring in Joan? Do I watch? He's on the. In your face. Oh yeah, we're going to. Next on the agenda. Well, yeah, we could do Joan now. I guess sure. Joan, you want to tell us about oh, we do have three, yes. elder services? So the South Shore elderly services. Um, even though the governor's made cuts, South Shore elderly services doesn't have any waiting list. All their clients mm -hmm. are getting services. Well, that's good. That's good. They're going to have a legislative uh, back, uh, breakfast planning, uh, and it's it's that's improved, but that's really increased. So they're going to have at the neighborhood club in Quincy, where they have politicians and others, media there. Mm -hmm. John, uh, what, what is this? Is that it's going to be? It's a breakfast for the media and politicians and all. It's a legislative. Yeah, legislative. And breakfast. it's on February thirteenth at the neighborhood club, Quincy. I, I believe I may go, so if anyone is interested, it might be worthwhile. Uh, South Shore Elders is very uh, up there with the technology. Mm -hmm. They're kind of one of the leading agencies, mainly because the director is so good. Mm -hmm. And they're on uh, Twitter. They have a big following of Twitter, Facebook, all the different ones. And now that you can make donations to them online, mm -hmm. Which is a new thing. Uh, Sandra is also, um, they had the social media and marketing updates with Comcast, but it was too expensive. So Sandra is going to go to Washington, D.C. with a meeting, uh, working with the media and also information on, on helping veterans. That's a, new, that's a big thing they're doing now, is working with the veterans. Mm -hmm. And all their, all their uh, services are seem to be growing. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, Quincy Hospital was closed. They were working with that, with the, um, what's going on there. They got to keep it open for two years. Yeah, they are. They do? Yeah, they got to keep it open for two years. The whole hospital? Oh, I think the whole hospital. Yeah, well, yeah. Is that closed? Still? Well, they were talking about the emergency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, emergency. just on the news. It was oh. on the news this morning. But I know they were trying to get the on that. The paper that they'll they open. Emergency. Well, I think they said there'll be admissions as well. So how would they do that if the hospital is up? Or I, I, I don't know. I just I happen to catch it. Can't anymore. Good. I know some people that work there. And I know they're out of work. So yeah. Well, yeah. I work there. They're going to have um, a board trading and advisory council trading on January 27th on a Tuesday. On Affordable Care Act and, and the health care system changes. So I'll be going to that. I think it's interesting to know that. So Joan is on the board along with another situate resident, Dave Dave Chappelle. Right? No. Dave, Dave Chappelle. And, Dave and, and Beth is on it and because the, she's, uh, right? she's with the advisory committee. So she goes to the board meetings too. So, and as well as Laura. So we have very good very representation, good is the point I wanted to make. You know, and, and yes, it's all all she's work. on the advisory committee, too. So it's, exactly. it's very good. Yeah, they're very happy with the situation. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> and, and I think that that after that, that, that uh, meeting about uh, um, the uh, affordable care, what information you can bring to us from that would be great. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And terrific for the TV audience, too. That's a very confusing issue for a lot of people. She does a good job, the person is doing the presentation. Uh, then we always have a, like a board training, the last thing of our meeting. And so this time we had uh, Mike Ward, who is the president of Insight Performance and Company. And what they do is, is they kind of meet with, with insurance companies and they try to get the best benefit for the workers 
of different agencies, so they work with South Shore LD. It doesn't cost South Shore LD any money. The insurance companies pay for it. And one of the big companies that they work with is Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And Blue Cross and Blue Shield had raised their rates. And so Sandra and Mike Ward met with Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and they were able to get them to reduce their 10%, which was like $100,000. Great. It's amazing. Yeah. That's great. But they really work for the, you know, to get the best benefits for their, their employees through insurance and whatever coverage. This is for the South Shore Health Services employees. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. 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 Oh, no, that's great, though. Yeah, it is good. They, they have other, they have like 250 clients all together in South Shore with Elderly Services is one of them. So they're really, you know, they, they're really doing quite a bit. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay. Uh, <coughs> go on to the, the budget. Yeah. Now, this has been explained to me the budget process a little okay. bit. Okay. So, I did give you two, uh, a stapled uh, set of pages and then a single yeah. sheet. Mm -hmm. So the difference between the two is the single sheet is what is going before the Board of Selectmen and the Advisory Committee to review for FY16. Mm -hmm. And um, the other stapled sheets are our current status, our current financial status as we go month to month with expenditures and balances mm -hmm. um, single sheet. for the various accounts and line items. So, um, Linda, just so I understand what, what you're looking at, can you define a little bit better so I you know? Like, I'm looking at this. Okay, the double sheet. Let's go to the double, the stapled sheets. So the second one? The one that's front and back? Um, I see what you're saying. The one that says, it says 541 Council on Aging Summary. Yeah. That's the first sheet. Yeah, okay. So that's a summary of our line item accounts. And, and the reason that might be of most interest, I guess, if we have salaries, of course, and, and you'll see those on the FY16 proposed numbers um, or recommended or approved numbers. But this is current. And then you see our line items for building maintenance and operation, electricity, gas, rentals, and leases. Even the transit and whatnot. Can I have a sample one? So that's what's being submitted? Um, this is current. You'll so this notice is, this is uh, the date for you? this printout is from date December 1st, 2014 to December 31st, 2014. So this just happens to be uh, a month pulled out. Oh, okay. Current month pulled out, Got printed it. out. Because at the bottom, maybe I'll point out first because that was a question that had come up. There's a $19,000 amount listed there for the study of the renovation of the senior center. Mm -hmm. So the information I got on that was that actually that money is being moved. You'll see money below that for 5,756. These are actual figures, but um, there was money appropriated back in 2001 to design a new senior center. And then there was money left over from that, which is the 19000 This is historically, I'm getting this from the accounting, our finance director. Um, and that was then reappropriated in 2008 at a town meeting and has been sitting in our account ever since. So then, in this past April in 2014, when it went before the town meeting, the special town meeting, no, that was a regular town meeting, um, for the new needs assessment, Basically, the money, some of that money was already there. The 19000 had been sitting there as a, a result or leftover from the previous allocation. And then we really only had to put 5756 from free cash from the town into another account for the rest of the feasibility study. So, in fact, soon, because you'll notice to the right where it says budget balance, there's $10,000 in the bottom item. That's what we owe for the needs assessment study right now. So we paid half, and we're paying another half, and then that will empty out that account, <laughs> or those two accounts. Mm -hmm. So that I wanted to explain, but the other line items you see above are the ones that we will repeat for 2016. 
But uh, let me also go over. That was the town's fiscal year. This was the um, July, July 1, 14, 15. Here is. Well, Linda, these are just monthly numbers from December. Well, yeah. but you've got, the year, you've got the year to date also. Right. I mean, the, the balances are in there, mm -hmm. but the expenditures are for the month, yes. So what fiscal year is this for, though? 2016 or 20? This particular one I'm showing you is an active month for this fiscal year, which would be 2015. Okay, so. so I was just using this example mm -hmm. to identify some of the things you had asked about. So if you go on to the, the next page, um, you'll also notice the formula grant is there. So as you know, we get a formula grant. Now, we I haven't had the infusion of the new money yet that we get annually from the formula grant. So their fiscal year is different than our fiscal year. The town's fiscal year is July 1. Formula grant fiscal year is January through December. Um, the formula grant is? The state funding that we receive through the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Good. And that is based on the number of elders from the town census. This year and for the past couple of years, it's been eight dollars an elder. Sure. It has been lower. Um, I don't know if it will continue mm -hmm. to remain or, or rise. Um, so um, I don't have the figure on the top of my head. Thirty-four thousand dollars is the total amount I believe that we end up receiving from them. And for instance, the, the position that we had filled last year for the volunteer and activities coordinator was funded through that grant because we could, because that salary was allowable through the amount that we were. Okay. Now do we have to apply for that grant annually? We do, we do. I do, I, I give them a report, which I did in August, July, August, and mm -hmm. then we, re we apply for the new grant in September. Mm -hmm. And did that 34000 take up the entire salary, or is there anything left over? No, there's, there's my other money that we're able to use for things like some of the newsletter posted, some of the um, professional developments that we do. Um, as I get better versed in it, I could really rattle off a lot of the opportunities we have through the grant, but I'm still sort of learning a little bit and about it. And how, how do you how, how do you account for the, the balance of the salary money? Do you have to account for that use of usage? Mm -hmm. Yes. And who do you account? To, to the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. Okay. Where we get the money. So they, they know exactly they know. where it's going. They know exactly where it's going. I'm not seeing the 34000 it, It's not listed. It's oh, not okay. listed. I, just, I was just mentioning that. It's not listed. Okay. So you'll notice that we have 14000 actually yes, in there because we didn't use that last okay. year. But okay. And does it carry over from year to year? Or if you don't use it, you lose it? Right. Well, you don't lose it, but I, I don't get the full amount the next time if I don't use the whole thing. So it is important that we use it. Mm -hmm. Thank you if you don't need it. Um, the other area that you were concerned about or had questions on was the gifts and donations account, mm -hmm. which is listed a little further down and mm -hmm. shows at 39000 which I cannot fully explain. <laughs> um, but I can explain that um, uh, we did go back to find that there was a $10,000 donation made in 2011 in March. Uh -huh. We have no detail on it because the finance director's records only go to July. July of that year, so March was a little early, but I haven't found it in okay, But this total encompasses mm -hmm. that $10,000. So we know it's there. Well, it's a good beginning if we're going to have but to make it. But it was designated three years ago. Mm -hmm. 2011. Mm -hmm. Wow. But it was designated when that gentleman um, donated it. It was mm -hmm. only to be used for a senior center. Okay, and there could be a story. So, is there any record of that? There could be. I have yes. Okay. Because it, I, according to Flash Show, mm -hmm. who I did contact about it, um, he actually wrote that on his check okay. memo. Okay. And he was very precise that he only wanted that $10,000 donated to honor his friend, who at that time was still alive, mm -hmm. that it only be used for a new yeah. senior center and nothing else. Okay. Okay. So now if it goes into this general fund... It's not a general fund. It's, it's general donation oh, fund. Yeah. But it's, it, it would be... I'm sure it's earmarked. Earmarked, yeah. There's it's a record of... I'm sure. It's on my file. 
so. But that's a good, that's a nice donation. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I have some good friends. They wouldn't donate ten thousand in my honor. <laughs> so now, um, is there any qualification, any limitations on how this donation fund money can be spent? I, and we're not talking about the ten thousand. I'm talking about this 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 money that's been contributed through. The, they're still, the, yeah, they're still the, yeah, the newsletter every month. People do donate so. Is there any stipulations on how this money can be used? Um, usually, and we ask people how they would like their, their donation to be um, allocated or, or used. Um, so sometimes it's for transportation, sometimes it's for the emergency fund. We'll give them the choices or the outcomes that we... And as um, needed. And as needed. Or direction. programs. They do donate direction. to programs. And actually that is a revolving account that we, um, that we don't lose. It's um, on the last page back page all by itself programs revolving um, so we have a balance there and that is some place that people have have their donations go so we would use that for supporting different programs and activities and events um, that we so have. now even though money has been taken from there and used for the various I, I know some people do not um, allocate on their donation check what it should be used for but some do so most do, and those that don't, if we ask them, they'll say wherever you think it's needed. So mm -hmm. right now, I would say an emergency fund because we do get asked to assist, and it is nice if, if we can do that. Mm -hmm. it's, um, so is that figure that we we're looking at? Is that exactly what we have now? Mm -hmm. And twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Twenty-two. I'm looking at. I'm looking at thirty-nine. Right here. No, it's the second page. No, those are the oh, the second page. Twenty-two yeah. and thirty-seven. The revolving fees. Oh, okay. Is okay, so the 22, um, and how, how do you keep track of the money that's used from that fund? How do we keep track of the money? Well, we can print a list of what we spent on programs. We okay. don't tap it often. Okay, but so, so it is tracked yes. whenever Absolutely. anything is yeah. that, That's a line item? It's its own account. It's a revolving account for programs. Okay, but is it added to annually? Not, no, it is no, not. No. no, it is not. Okay. In fact. No. Okay, I'm not the greatest uh, finance mathematician or what have you in the world. I'm ancient in English. So, above it, it says scheduled gifts and donations. Then below that, the 22. Um, what, is the, what, what, is, what is the difference there? Scheduled gifts and donations. 2201. Right, that's the account but number. That's just the account number for where it goes. Right, right. Deposited. But I mean, it says 39. So you, you, that's are you confused that there are two there are two different items? Two, yeah, 2201 two, 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 and 2218. Right, exactly. Yeah, those are, they're two different. One, one account is for donations to programs. Mm -hmm. One account is just gifts. Right. The gifts and donations are contributed. To that if they request that um, next to the 39 if you're looking at that and arrange to date well, no, well you were saying to me 22 I, 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 I I'm, I'm confused that's now. on the back 22 yeah. is down here okay right, right okay so the, okay so what is the difference between those two it says revolving senior programs there's a big difference program. so that's got nothing to do with the gifts and donations account Correct? Well, they're two different accounts. Yes. Right. Sometimes people would want to donate into programs. So, they, so yeah, it's so a separate account, and if that's what they like. That's, this was in place before I came. Right, right. So um, we, don't often, um, we don't often put the money there, because we don't really need to do so that. So you, ta you no. take money from the to gifts and donations account and put it no. in? No. No. Okay, no. so it's <coughs> two separate. Right. So I'm showing you figures that we have. Um, okay. Not a lot has been done with it since I've been in. Um, mm -hmm. We have received donations and we've used them often. Um, last winter, last winter we, I don't know what figure we gave out for assisting some people with different things that they weren't eligible for elsewhere, but we did. 
So um, that's a lot of what we do, and otherwise it, it stays there until we find the big need. So again, this may be a stupid question. So again, so we have a total of 50. If you add those two figures together, we have that extra, extra money. Yeah, we have that extra money. That's all at two different accounts. Well, I understand they're two different accounts, yeah. but but they're, 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 it's money that belongs to the SCOA. And programs is for programs. So right, I, I get that now, but. <coughs> So that's a nice that's a nice cushion. Sure. So then, if you want to go to the single sheet, yes. Well, I have a question based on what you mentioned earlier. Why not take what would it take if you pulled money out of the revolving programs and, and enable this building to get Wi-Fi? Um, that's possible. Yes. Good question. It's. Um, I have a good question. Then you're saying 2218. Of that account, yes. Yeah. 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 It would it would um, align with that yeah. service, yes. As long as it would be used, yes. it seems to me as though it would be good money spent. Yes. We um, have been talking about that. Okay. Good. But we wouldn't know that unless you told that. <laughs> well, I mean, you're talking, I don't know anything white, but right, I'm not talking about that. Yeah. So why not be able to get this building? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Because I personally know a lot of seniors that have iPads that they can't use here. Right. Not just because I just got one. So I'm close to home there. <laughs> right. right. So is it the, the consensus of the group that we'd like you to look into that? Yeah. Sounds like you already is. Well, but it's good to have a consensus of a group. <laughs> I like support. Um, the last, or the single page, just again to go back to that then, is what I completed in terms of a, of a new budget for FY16 and these are the numbers then that you, uh, you would hear about. So um, FY14 expended, 15 appropriated, FY15 expended to date and then the FY16 department request and what was approved or recommended by the town administrator. Okay, so those are the columns. Um, so for each salaries, I mean, those are hardwired. I mean, people get their raises. It's all expected. It's already planned for as people, um, as their anniversaries roll around, the, the steps are automatic. So that's built in, really. Um, so otherwise, I don't have that many line items that have to really be played with, um, electricity, gas, the repair and maintenance of property, certainly something has to be there just in case something gives, but we do have um, maintenance that has to occur to um, air conditioning units and different things that we have had them come in and do expected maintenance, regular maintenance, and that costs, I mean everything costs money, so we do pay it out of our budget for that. Um, the vehicle services, you'll notice vehicle services. The paratransit ride, those things are actually reimbursable and supported by GAPTRA money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we pay it out of our budget and we have to have it in the budget, but it does come back to us assuming everything stays status quo with the state and we can count on it, but that's the agreement, the arrangement. Rentals and leases, uh, copier. Um, support services, Comcast, Internet, postage, of course, the newsletter, and anything else we do. You'll notice some of them have been actually cut a little bit, so we are trying for a level-funded budget and really did try to um, realize that we could make it with what we had spent before without really putting any more money into it. But you know how you had extra money? Black of a bit of things. Mm -hmm. And we had to give up sending out the newsletter mm -hmm. because of the money it cost to mail it. Do you Why couldn't we take some of that money and then go back to having a newsletter six, eight more, more frequently? Um, well, the newsletter right now, because of the company we're contracted with, um, I've mentioned before, and I'm not sure anything, I'm not sure I've seen any improvement or heard from them about this, and I haven't asked either, but. 
the advertising is what pays for the printing of the newsletter mm -hmm. and, and we don't really have a certain level that they would be looking for in order to print it more often or make it bigger. So right now, because of that situation, we are contracted for the six times a year. Oh, see, I was told we had to be good. Because we used to have it 12 times a year. And that's plus. Yeah, but and that, that might have been through a different service. Money and postage. Um, I will check on the contract, and there are other places we could have it printed once our contract runs out with liturgical publications, but um, that would be something to look into. And, and I know, ideally, and actually one of the things, you know, when we do end up talking about the needs assessment report and certainly how people hear about our programs or want to hear about our programs is is critical, is important, and I'm sure the newsletter is discussed as well as all the other sources, and that might be something that, that we we'll have to look at because money. that's what yeah. the community is, is looking for. Um, anyway, the line items, of course, mileage reimbursement. So that is a line item that staff people get reimbursed for the amount of driving around they do to do town business, Good. whether they go to town hall or to the community building or to people's homes that they're visiting, they get reimbursed for that and that's what that line item is for. Sure. Office supplies, cleaning supplies, oh, fuels and lubricants, generally speaking those are vehicle related and those are also reimbursable by GATRA, so three of the things I've mentioned are actually reimbursable by the GATRA funding that we get every year, or have been getting for a few years, or a couple of years. And so then, I know we have to have the money in the accounts and for, the, for these line items, but if we're getting it back, it's, it, how does it show up? Is we, doesn't it go right back in? It does. It does. It just goes right back, goes right back into the account. And then equipment, that's a new line item actually. So um, this equipment purchase right now is earmarked for something that would make our internal um, remote operations with town hall, our email, and different things that we do to communicate um, administratively, for lack of a better word, I guess. That's a unit I wanted to purchase, and I and also was proposed at that time um, for the wireless. But um, one was approved and one was kind of just held for the time being, so that's why we could look elsewhere and we could talk about the wireless from another source. Um, so that, and then um, a lot of work. So the total is on the back side. So you'll notice it, it is certainly a large, would appear to be a, a decent budget for us. Um, I can't say I'm unhappy, you know, they fund what we need. We do have um, some capital that wasn't through through the Council on Aging. I didn't have to propose the capital for a new rug, which is in the facilities capital budget. Um, so we are supposed to be getting a nice, um, some kind of a new rug soon. What? That's nice capital for us. Thanks, John. So what happens? Yeah. How, how, yeah. how is the difference between the 348, 57, 314, 239? What, what happens to <laughs> come to some uh, agreed upon figure there? You know, what the town, town administrators recommend? I guess we're requesting. How does that, what, that, what negotiations have to occur there? there? Well, they're done. I mean, basically, the budget that's going before the Board of Selectmen is the $314,000. Uh -huh. um, the department requests, you know, I pretty much did level funds. Um, so I think what might have happened to what the difference is there, or, or maybe it, it was the funding, but we go with the town administrator's record. So we're so cut by twenty six thousand dollars. Just, just by what either I might have submitted and asked for, and or um, the position that we have open, the fact that it's funded through the formula grant. I'm not sure if it might have at one point been. Uh, uh -huh. three hundred and forty three or three hundred? Did you say three hundred and fourteen? Three hundred and fourteen. So where is that number? On the back of that page. Mm -hmm. The single page. Oh, single single page. page. Oh, I'm sorry. So in our 15 yeah, appropriated. Page? It's this one. So, it's another page. Uh, it's so, coming. It's so the recommended budget is about four thousand dollars less than okay. this, this year. And that could have been um, because that position might have inadvertently gone into the original recommendation for me, the original submission mm -hmm. of my budget. Mm -hmm. That could be because of. 
well, actually, that's not enough. So really, it's not. It's not. That's not the problem. Um, I'm not sure. I do know so where it was taken from. Overall, I didn't bring that with me. But we're, we're not being cut significantly. Not significantly. If at all. No, no, she really was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, the, so where, where does it stand now, Linda? I go before um, the Board of Selectmen just to have that uh -huh. final approval yep. on February 17th. Now the 12th, which is our next board meeting, I also leave here after that and go to the advisory committee and, and they ask me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so speaking of the next meeting, um, were you able to speak with Joanne, the art teacher, to figure out if we can meet here on Thursday evenings? Or? Mm -hmm. Yes. We are. are we going to wait till we get to old business? We are. Yeah. We're going to. We're going to. Uh, yeah, we should. Okay, well, I hope I was able to answer some questions. Um, if you have more, I can continue to research and, and get a little bit better versed in some of this, but some of it's historical. So I'm bringing it forward and will give me an opportunity really to understand more about it too. Um, but now I also know I can bring you in each year as we move through this process and include you. So that's good. I, I didn't realize that before. Okay. Good. All right, we're going to move on to old business. Um, I think, um, did, what's a PFM? The PFM Public Facilities oh, oh, Master yeah, Plan. Yeah, right. Sorry. No, I, I just figured if she could just answer. <laughs> So yeah. this is actually on the town website, yep. but it, you have to go to the departments or the um, committees and find them mm -hmm. and go to the left side and find yep. the... So I print, uh, copied the whole thing. I don't think the whole thing is of interest, but this is what Karen Pritchard had presented to the Board of Selectmen, um, I think in November. Forgive me if I'm not actually, the, oh, November 18th, that was November. Yeah. So, if you wanted to um, even move all the way through, you have to go back toward the end. So the 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 mm -hmm. I mean, there's a page for recommendations, and included there, of course, was the middle school, was the safety complex, was to renovate the gate school as the town center complex four, named the Council on Aging town hall, school administration, and the recreation department. So we're on the recommendations page. And then there's the library options, and she went through the middle school options, which are now um, a reality, I guess. Um, and then the public safety options, which again also is on its way. And then if you get to the page which says sound town center complex options so we're included in there I have not yet um, been contacted by the architect but I believe will be soon for thoughts and feelings about needs and requests for different things mm -hmm. um, when they start to look at that so Uh, Linda, I don't know what happened to them, but um, prior to your being hired, mm -hmm. the board, um, uh, remember we went on the van uh, mm -hmm. and we went to all the possible sites uh, that could be used for a, town? A, a, for a, a senior mm -hmm. center. Instead of having an in-house meeting that evening, we all hopped on the new van, it was new then, and we traveled around to various sites. How many years ago was that? I think it was over two, maybe three years ago, maybe two years ago. It was in the summer. Mm -hmm. But we did go to the gate school, mm -hmm. and we had many board meetings at that time, and there were actual plans about the gate school if we went there mm -hmm. after it was renovated. Mm -hmm. And there was much discussion um, for the board meetings around that time as to what, what would work and what wouldn't work, mm -hmm. and the fact that we would be sharing the building with REC mm -hmm. and with the town hall employees. And there were plans. Mm -hmm. Now, Richard Mitchell, um, who is no longer on our board, <coughs> he worked for a very short time on this. He was on this until he retired from us. Right. 
but he wasn't he, he wasn't on for a long time but nonetheless there were plans mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to those there plans. is a rendering there is a rendering I've seen it through the <coughs> administrator I, I've seen it I may have it it was a draft rendering right to see if, just to show what would be included and, and thoughts regarding where well I was just thinking that would be a good place to start mm -hmm. you know sure. because we had m m much discussion about I mean, one thing, my memory's not that great about the, the entire plan, mm -hmm. but one of the discussion points was the fact that we might be sharing restrooms with the rec department mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th in that plan. There were a lot of fine-tuned points sure. that um, needed to be worked out. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it all, I mean, it's yeah. all really just starting now. They couldn't really do work. more until the right. grad school was a fact. Uh, there is another page here which just gave the facility assessment for the Council on Aging, so they ran through all of that. It's further down in the report. You know, property is not suitable for the functional needs of the Council on Aging, undersized, insufficient kitchen, dining, lack of private meeting space, insufficient activity space. I mean, all the things we would hope would be noted, so they were. And building would need a, I think this building would need a total renovation for any future purpose. I think that's as far as what would they do with this property once we vacated. So, um, so I think they propose to sell it. You know, I, I think one of the things I'm, <clears throat> I'm wrestling with, I don't know how to have an answer. Um, These I'm are sorry. people who've been here longer and are a lot more knowledgeable. I am in feel way up there. Um, I'm wrestling with the fact or with the idea of. Of, or the question really is not an idea a question what what interest or involvement or um, activity should we have as a council on aging when sites are being considered for possible location for a senior center whether it be a joint facility with the mm -hmm. town hall or whether it be a, a standalone facility or how do you know how does the how does the council members feel about what involvement we should have with that and that that's we were actively involved at one point mm -hmm. oh yeah oh no we were oh yeah we i board for about the council for about two years our board meetings consisted of this was a, a not never ending topic mm -hmm. each, but, each month but were you um speaking also with others in the town about well, at one right, okay. yeah, and at one point when John Dunahee was our board liaison, he suggested he brought up the fact that there was a parcel of land um, owned by owned by the uh, land trust. Mm -hmm. He was also the board liaison for them, so he suggested that we meet with the housing mm -hmm. authority board. And we did have a joint meeting, mm -hmm. and the only way that that site that's an empty piece of land now down on the driftway um you can't really see it from the street but it's it's, it's on old driftway I think. right old driftway, old driftway. Yeah. so um the, the van we just went to the edge of it you know we can swamp all the way in but we had a joint meeting with the housing authority mm -hmm. right uh, they're the ones that have jurisdiction over that right. correct that. yeah and they su and they suggested and this all came about because john dunnity suggested mm -hmm. it and well, so that um one of the stipulations of using that land um, from the housing authority mm -hmm. would be that there would have to be a th housing on there as well mm -hmm. and there were lots of um, a couple of meetings we discussed potential y you can have a senior center surrounded by not not like little teepees right next to the building but a senior center on the land with some low-income housing be the same around it central school housing. Well, Mm -hmm. The plot of land, which would be mm -hmm. most ideal, is behind there. Mm -hmm. yeah, I well, I was just but, answering I mean, Linda because she asked if we worked with any other. I think you're other. talking specifics. I, I'm talking more kind of generally. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I think things are going to start happening mm -hmm. relatively quickly now that the vote has happened, and now that we know that Gates is going to be vacated at some point within the next year and a half or, or two years or so. If there are going to be plans that are going to be start to be developed about what's going to happen with gates, and if someone is thinking about uh, possibly including us in that facility, but 
if the consensus is that that might not be the best thing for the senior center, you know, we can't, we or, mm -hmm. you have to be in, in, in on the mm -hmm. planning stages. So that's, right. that's mm -hmm. my, my thought is, good is so, good so we need to make sure that, and I'm not for mm -hmm. or against anything right at this point in time, but uh, I'm just saying that, you know, before things go too far along mm -hmm. in, the, in the planning process, mm -hmm. you know, I would hope that, you know, our, our voice would be mm -hmm. heard at the town hall in terms of, of, of letting them know, you know how we feel about right. the, the, mm -hmm. the, the process and, and what's happening with it. Yeah. And as a board, as a board, we would have to have a general consensus of the board members. I don't know if that would involve a vote or what, but I mean, in agreement with what, what you're saying, um, it can't be one or two of us on the board who think it should be one one way or the other. Yeah. I think of you're kind of jumping the gun. Well, I think what he's saying is we've got to be a united voice. <coughs> I just said that. I just said that. Well, it cannot I, be I, one I or two of us. I just want to make sure that we're that, that, we, that, we're, that our voice is heard right. to be included. as things start to move. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and I, I just want to say for and those our, not just our voice, but our opinions that they might come yeah. and ask and say, well, what do you people right. think about, you know, this is something we're thinking of. And, you know, how do you, how do you think? How do you feel about mm -hmm. it? And I just said, for those of us that are new, I, I, I'm not familiar at all with what went before us. Mm -hmm. What's the history? Right. How, how far have we gotten mm -hmm. uh, with with our mm -hmm. proposals or our ideas? I need I need mm -hmm. to know a little bit of that mm -hmm. too. Well, and it is too bad to it. Marty had to leave yet another engagement. But um, so he's our board of selectmen liaison. So so both giving us information when it matters, and I think also taking information from us mm -hmm. is is mm -hmm. one way. Yep. I did actually even ask um, the town administrator if she would come and meet with us here and she would be happy to. Yep. So okay, that's another that's opportunity for mm -hmm. some discussion and hearing yeah. from her what the plan would be and giving mm -hmm. some feedback. Um, you know, I, I imagine there's also an opportunity at some point with the Board of Selectmen to be there if yep. something is happening where we right. can you know, have input yep. um, or and, ask questions. Yeah, And we can be proactive. I mean, you know, we can talk to the housing authority. I'd like to have Jerry Kelly mm -hmm. come in here and, and talk to us about his thoughts. And when, you know, at several of the forums but before the mm -hmm. election, I thought Jerry had some rather interesting things that he said about how he thought a senior center could be mm -hmm. funded, whether it be mm -hmm. partially by the town, partially by private, fully by private, mm -hmm. or whatever. So, you know, I, I think we need to start thinking exactly. rather than kind of sitting back waiting for somebody to say, all right, this is the plan, this is what it's going to be, and we need to have some involvement in, 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 mm -hmm. in how the plan develops. So, so just let me understand this, uh, this Gates proposal for a possible COA there. Mm -hmm. how, how close is that, or is that just is this just talking well, about thought, ideas and yeah, stuff like that? Oh, it's a plan. It's the master it's facility. Plan. It's the public facilities master plan. It, it is. Yeah. Okay. It's the master exactly. plan. Right. It's approved by the Board of Selectmen. It is in place. However, um, you know, it's going to take two years or more for the gate school to be relocated. Mm -hmm. And so then it's something that comes up later. Whether there is still opportunity for discussion it is not my place. It's um, yeah, see? beyond me. But well, it's also it's an option. It's an option, an option. but it's so well, it seems to be in that in point. Senior center or at the town <coughs> center the gate school. So it's not an option, JD. It, that's the plan. It seems to be. It's a concrete plan. plan. It's not an. It's not an option. The the, the, the plan is in place in it, terms it's of an option. It. I. I'm sorry. I. am not supposed to speak. You no. can't. So I can't. I know it's what's going on, but I can't. Okay. It's. Well, I think the thought that Dr. Price has is we've got to jump on it now. We've got to try to figure mm -hmm. out how well, we yeah. can be heard. I mean, and, and give them mm -hmm. higher ideas. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine if, if, um, if the senior population situate mm -hmm. felt that that was not appropriate, and that they came forward with maybe some private funding. Mm -hmm. That's the how, how could the town force you into a decision that you know? Right. If it was, if it was a decision that could be made that it wasn't going to cost the town a dime. You have to build a well, city to do privately funded. <laughs> and I think I think there's some yeah. some definite options along that line that could happen. I mean, you know, I, I don't remember what the total dollar amount was that when they had developed a plan for the previous senior center mm -hmm. to build it was 
Four, or five million, that. six million. So it's not. I mean, it's it's a lot of money, but it's not. It's not a seventy million dollar school. Uh, um, so you know, if we if, if we if we I mean, we can do some investigating on our own, and that's why I think people like Jerry Kelly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There are probably other people out there. Um, I know that uh, Doug Smith lives up my way in Country Way. He's the, the, the chief fundraiser for what's the college in Easton? Oh, Stonehill. Stonehill. Um, I know he's helped the uh, mm -hmm. he's helped the friends of the uh, what they call the friends of the library. Mm -hmm. I should know. I've been involved in. Anyway, <laughs> the, 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 li library. the library fundraising private private right. fundraising right. effort. Yeah. You know, they're going to raise two million dollars. It's you know it hasn't been easy, but they're they're halfway there. So. You know, there may be some private mm -hmm. funding opportunities. Sure. I don't know if it's grant money or, but you know, sure. I think we can look at, we, we, can, we can start pursuing some of those ideas. Sure. And I was very encouraged. I, I met with Kim Ryan mm -hmm. a week or so, or a couple weeks ago. I had coffee with her. Kim has a lot of good ideas, and she's with the, the friends. And um, uh, they put out a thing on their Facebook page, and within a day, they had like 400 likes. They, they, they were trying to get 200 likes in a day from seniors, and they got 400 in a matter of hours. Uh, uh, so, you know, there, there's some, you know, I think the seniors in this town are pretty aware of, of, of what they want, and, uh, you know, we just have to tap into that. So, guys, you know, I, I'm just not one who would be willing to sit back and have something thrown at us right off the bat, say, this is, this is what it's going to be. That's why we wanted you on the board, my dear. <laughs> you're not, you well, know, you're, you are a proactive you know, um, kind you know, of person. I'm not looking to make waves. I'm not looking to, you, oh, know, no, no. you know, but I'm just looking to make sure that we, we end up with, with a facility that's going to be the best one to serve the needs of the, of the, of yeah. the senior community. That's really yeah. what it comes down to, whether it be at Gates or whether it be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not content with just, Going with, going with the gates right. with the gates proposal at this point, I think there may be some other options available. Definitely. And when I said that it was that wasn't an option, that's what I meant. It, it, unless we come up with some other um, plans, uh, concrete plans, ideas that we can work from um, after that election vote, if we if we don't have anything else in mind for the seniors. The town has the gate school in mind for us, sharing it. I, I mean, I think if Patricia can come, if the town administrator can come and speak to us and really make it, you know, clarify it, would be good. But the, the plan would be to share, at least that's, what's, that's what the plan was. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's still, it's to could share the gate school with the town hall employees. Could we start out maybe by having someone from the master planning committee mm -hmm. come in? Present to us uh, in the coming month or so, and well, have, well, have well, well, someone from the, the master planning committee, facil the, the public, public facilities facility. master planning mm -hmm. committee, come and just give us you know a little presentation. Sure. I mean, obviously they're the ones that have been involved in putting this together. So, uh, Karen Pritchard gave it oh such a wonderful, wonderful uh, presentation at the town meeting. This town meeting, I watched it on TV. I wasn't there. She was great. Maybe she has Karen time. Pritchard. She's on this committee. Okay. It's on the back page. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, she was she was in total command of the uh -huh. of the the knowledge of that, you know. Was that town meeting? She spoke at um, town board of selectmen. Board of selectmen. I think it was the board of selectmen. Okay. Oh, okay. It was. Yeah. 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 Actually, it might still be on SCTV oh. if you go on YouTube. Uh huh. Maybe, maybe no, I don't. It's not on channel nine, but maybe. The but it might be on the computer YouTube. too. But anyway, she she was just um, she had she had, was so organized and gave a total presentation of all of the facility. You know what what this what what Linda has printed up for us. She could come and speak to us. It would be great. Sure. Um, yeah, sure. The, so is there a motion to maybe ask a motion yeah. to have Linda ask uh, Karen Bridget mm -hmm. to come for, to our February meeting? Mm -hmm. Everyone in favor of that? Yes. Yes, I sure. second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, maybe my thought might be for uh, March. Maybe see if Jerry Kelly is available. You know, this is a kind of someone outside of town hall.
to speak on, uh, on mm -hmm. what his thoughts are, and I can I can talk to Jerry ahead of time so he can kind of get his mm -hmm. his thinking together about what he might you know like to like uh, like work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and now, do you think it's a little too early to have that fun? Your friend Doug, your acquaint, your your neighbor, friend Doug Smith. Doug Smith. Talk to us about fundraising. Or is I'd probably hold off on that just for a little, little bit. bit see, you know, just try to you know. start with the basics. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it gets to the point that it looks like a private fundraising effort might be. Helpful, I and mean, obviously we, we can't do that. That would be. I would to mention that we need to have a friends group that is fundraising for for us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, specifically. Yeah. Not just earmark for a senior center, but as a friends of the council on aging. Uh -huh. Well, fortunately, we have a we have a friends of the situation seniors group. Right here. Uh -huh. But even to say it would have to be a friends of the council on aging as I mean, as the library as a. Friends of the oh, we'd have to have our own separate friends group. That's my feeling. Is that right now, in order for us to get money, you know, for our purposes? But that's something that oh, I never heard. I never heard that before. That but we would discuss. For instance, my mother lives in Rockland, yeah. and they just got a, a new senior center, yeah. mm -hmm. and they just had the friends of the Rockland seniors yeah. helping with it. Friends of the exactly. Rockland senior center. Yeah, that's with the fundraisers. We can look into yeah. it. Yeah, that's we've got time to do that. Uh, um, and the other thing is, I, you know, Linda's kind of addressed it, but would anyone want to make a motion to have Linda um, look into the Wi-Fi issue here in the, I in like the motion. center? Second it? Okay. Second it. Another, another <laughs> item on Linda's long list. I got it. Um, I think we kind of went from old business right into new business, didn't we? Um, mm -hmm. Any other items or anything anyone wants to bring up under old new business? New business or oh well, or under old business, um, I, I, were you able to discuss with Joanne Papandrea at all about changing her our class? At this point, we can meet here. We'll be meeting here in February, and, and as now, we can continue to meet here once a month. Oh, good. So we'll meet here. Yes. So on February twelfth, which is our next meeting date, um, we can meet here at the senior center. Mm -hmm. I had talked with um, my outreach staff, Laura and Jenny, who could come and meet, but if, uh, or at least speak a bit, and it, isn't, it wouldn't necessarily be lengthy, but I don't know if we want two speakers, so if, if we want me to check on Karen first and see if that mm. would be... Oh, if Karen can't do it that evening, maybe yeah. she has someone on her committee that would be willing sure. to right. step in for her. So I'll, I, I can hold off on um, the outreach presentation until... Karen Pritchett we'll was on this committee this semester. Pritchett. Let's see. It's because this could be a big month for outreach. Oh, right. True. True. Mm -hmm. Well. Oh, we can probably do this. Is it yeah. February 12th? February 12th. Yeah. Actually, no, I think, um, in, uh, I'm kind of going back to, um, to the, uh, the survey. I, you know, I, I, I would like. I think it would be a good idea to have uh, um, a presenter here go. I mean, they're going to do it in the board of selectmen's meeting. Right. But you said it. I'm amazed at how many people do watch the uh, presentation. <laughs> yeah. I've had more people come into my office and comment. Like, oh, you know, on TV. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> and I was flipping through the channels last night. I, could, I came oh, in at no. 9 and there, and there our last <laughs> meeting was. There I was. I called my son and said, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do get something done at those meetings. Um, my brother's dog is sitting me on TV, and my brother will say, look, that's Dale, and, and, and Tucker will go, woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, Mike, do you think we can fit in the presentation <laughs> about the survey? I think that would be great. Once it's open, next, once it's public. As, if, if they have yeah, presented to the, to the board of selections. Right. So that I'm, I'm guessing that might not be until March. Okay, I mean, all right. Sure. For us, for yeah. Okay. Okay. Someone that was on earlier survey. for okay. the board survey. Survey. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Any other items that you guys want to bring up or? So, Linda, just for my note taking, March is when uh, the selectmen's meeting will be for the needs assessment study presentation. Um, I would say not before March. Is so we don't like a March meeting. I do not know. Okay. Okay, I'm going to let you all know that as far as this budget goes in my minutes, 
I'm not repeating mm -hmm. everything in the minute. Yeah, just say, so <laughs> I'm just going to say we reviewed the general. budget, right. and That's you all. have it if you're interested in looking at it again. <laughs> I make a Thank motion you. the meeting be adjourned. Second. I second a motion. I All in favor? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.